have to break for about 10 minutes and reconvene at 11 The first picture is the description of the Romanian, your building, and your The purpose of my day today uh, will be to how to identify, to characterize, to localize, and if possible to have quantitative determination and to follow the evolution of active spaces on the catalytic surface. And to illustrate this subject, I will take the example of the methanol synthesis mainly on the copper uh, zinc aluminate catalyst and partly on a palladium uh, catalyst. The method that we use to characterize and quantify some of the active spaces are PPT experiments, Fourier transforming power spectroscopy, chemical trapping, and double uh, program surface reaction. The problem with the active uh, spaces is that the most often, the most abundant surface spaces is not necessarily a reaction intermediate and even more is very often only expected. Therefore, the reactivity of a surface entity must be as possible determined under reaction conditions. The method that we use is Fourier transform in part spectroscopy. Fourier transform in part in part spectroscopy will in general permit the detection, the characterization, sometimes the localization of the surface spaces, and that if the spaces is very reactive, the spectra will be often taken apart from the reaction condition and the quantitative determination that are often difficult. By chemical trapping, it is not so difficult to have the quantitative aspect of the characterization of the active spaces on the surface, but in fact, this method cannot distinguish between the same spaces absorbed on two different sides, for example, uh, four main spaces located on the support and uh, four main spaces located on the beta. Finally, TPD, for example, introduced a thermodynamic aspect and sometimes a uh, quantitative determination uh, is possible. But the identification of the surface spaces given rise right, to a given desorption must be often be made by other tools. And finally, TPSR gives an idea of the reactivity of the <coughs> surface spaces and the evolution maybe of the surface spaces. So, on the methanol synthesis, on the copper zinc aluminate catalyst, it seems a uh, general agreement that four main spaces are the active spaces, and of this type of catalyst, I get some information to the characterization the localization of this as a four-way space. First of all, just the first uh, spectra of the CO absorbed on the copper zinc aluminate catalyst in presence of hydrogen and with increasing amount of carbon dioxide. And you can see that when you increase the quantity of CO2, in fact, we increase the penetration of the CO and we have a change, in fact, the number of the, of the CO 
absorption and impact on this uh, on this failure. It's very difficult to, to see if the CO is absorbed on the C on the copper zero side on, on, on the copper plus side because here we have a blown peak and I cannot exclude the formation of a CO absorbed on the say, uh, on the copper plus spaces. If I have another type of catalyst, the CO just interested in this part is a copper deposited just on alumina. In this case, at room temperature, the first one, we have this peak at, six, uh, at 60 degrees, we have an increase and we have the same type of peak. But at 120 degrees, after some desorption of carbon monoxide, it appears two peaks the red one and the green one, and the red one will be attributed to the CO absorbed on the copper zero side, and the green one will be attributed to the CO absorbed on the copper plus side. After the CO absorption, just to fix the band corresponding to the formate absorption, we found spectra of the formic acid on that aluminate and this first band here will be attributed to a vitantate formate species and this band, in fact this band are also characteristic of the formate absorption on zinc aluminate but it seems that attributed by Jean-Claude Lavalle in Caen, this is a formate on a mixed oxy, maybe on the zinc aluminate oxy. As soon as we have some copper on the zinc aluminate, we change completely the spectra and it is a little bit more complicated. And here we have the formation at room temperature that the same type of uh, same type of spectra than with zinc aluminate. Here at 60 degrees C, it seems that in fact mix P could be divided in three P and also here the three band and two of this band and the band corresponding to 52 here could be attributed to the formate located on the copper. We have here the formate located on the zinc aluminate in the red and but at 120 degrees the band corresponding to the formate located on the copper, this band and this two band completely disappear and we have the formation of carbon monoxide, we have the formation of carbonates and we have the formation of hydrogenocarbonates. And in fact, at more than 120 degrees C, the band <coughs> corresponding to the formate located on the copper in the CO plus H2 disappear completely with the formation of all the band carbonates, hydrogenocarbonates, and carbon monoxide. The same spectra, the same spectra, but starting with carbon dioxide and hydrogen, just look and look on the B here, that the formate, oh sorry, that's in the C gas, so it's what it is here. That it is the adsorption of the formic acid and the uh, copper zinc catalyst. That's the slide that we have on the COH2 reaction. And in this case, in the CO plus H2 reaction, we don't form the formation of the band corresponding to the formate located on the copper. We have only the band corresponding to the formate located on the support. 
but in the red here, they have the formation of the metoxic spaces. No band is responding to formate located on copper, starting with CO plus H. But starting with CO2 plus H2 at the same temperature, in this case, it's possible to characterize at uh, 52 here, formate located on the copper, and you can characterize also the formate to the copper on this part of the slag, plus the formate located on the sugar. The, case, the question remains why it's possible to characterize formate starting, plus, starting from CO2 plus H2, and why it is not possible to characterize formate from copper starting from CO plus H2. So, to summarize this, that's the, this table that you the band corresponding to the adsorption of formate the starting from formic acid on zinc oxide, on alumina, on zinc alumina, on the reduced copper, and you have this two band corresponding to the formate on the copper. So if you are looking the this type of transparency, it seems very difficult to have a quantitative determination of the, of the formate located on the copper looking this type of uh, spectra. That's one of the reasons that we try to have another technique to have a quantitative determination. This is the chemical trapping of the carboxylate spaces, just the principle of this chemical trapping. We have a carboxylate spaces on the surface. Here, for example, the formate spaces, mono or pigante, that's not so important. And we do the reaction of the formate spaces on the surface with an organic alkylating agent, here the dimethyl sulfate, at an appropriate temperature. And in fact, that the methylation of your formate spaces to form here the methyl formate, and this methyl formate can be uh, easily characterized and can be easily quantified by glass chromatography. And in, with this condition, it is possible to follow the evolution of the formate spaces located on the catalyst uh, with different, at different temperatures and at different time of reaction. For example, the fact that the the evolution of the formate coming from the CO2 plus H2 <coughs> reaction, that the evolution of the formate that you have on the support only, and that the evolution of the formate that we have on the copper zinc alumina catalyst. You can see that here, first, the quantity of formate on the support is less than the quantity of the formate that we have on the copper zinc alumina catalyst. And also, it seems that parts of the formate are formed very rapidly on the catalyst compared to the formation of the support. And maybe also, it's one of the first indications that you can have two types of formate on a copper zinc alumine catalyst, as indicated by infrared spectroscopy. With this catalyst, you have more copper on this catalyst. It is an industrial catalyst. You have about 50% of uh, copper on this catalyst. And we do the reaction CO plus H2 uh, with the seal gas, sorry, at very low temperature. And we have this here and follow the formation of the formate. If you increase from 20 degrees the, the temperature of the reaction, you have a peak the formation of the formate and after a decrease in the concentration of the formate and if, if you uh, have a higher temperature you have another peak here and a decrease here and in fact in the end the concentration of the formate is approximately 
do the same independently of the temperature of the reaction. But you can see that here, the maximum of the concentration of the formate that you can have in the first case is about uh, the double than the concentration that the formate that we have in the end of the reaction. And also, it's an indication that we have here formation and the composition of formate, and that's no stable formate, but here we have formate that are very stable, and the first idea is to say this type of formate are located on the uh, metal, on the copper, this type of formate are located on the support. And so, if you follow the evolution of the formate, you create some formate on the surface of the catalyst, and you follow the evolution of the formate uh, by addition of some hydrogen, some formate here are active, okay? the concentration of the formate decreases, but after five hours, the formate is constant, and you have, can follow also the same evolution, the increase of the concentration of the metal C on the surface of the catalyst. And you can see that approximately the quantity of the formate that disappears is approximately the same as the quantity of the metal C that are formed. And it's another possibility to say that part of the formate are inactive and part of the formate are very active. So, but with this uh, trapping experiment, it is not possible to separate the formate located on the copper. You can see that we have some active and some inactive formate, but it is not possible to uh, separate the formate, the quantity of formate from on the support, the quantity of the formate from on the metal. And on this condition, we use a TPD experiment to try to resolve this problem. So, very simple uh, TPD of uh, the formate uh, on the zinc aluminate. We have only one peak, mainly CO2 formation, plus a uh, few amount of carbon monoxide, and we have no methanol formation on zinc aluminate. Assume we add some copper, this condition, we have two peaks. The first one at the same temperature than in the support, and the, another one here at 470K, that which is attributed to the decomposition of the formate located on the copper. And you can see here that when we have formate decomposition. At the same time, we have also methanol formation. In fact, we have a competition between the decomposition of the formate and the hydrogenation of this formate into methanol. The hydrogen is formed during the formate decomposition. And you can see also that here we have small amount of formate uh, during the decomposition of the formate located on the support. And this could be an interaction of, I don't know, a spillover of hydrogen from the beta to the support to have a small activity of the formate located on the support. If you change the percentage of copper with a different type of catalyst, you have this type of curve, the first peak, the second peak, in fact, the temperature of each peak can move, but you can see that also the ratio between the first and the second peak change. And in fact, you, after decomposition, in fact, it's possible to have a surface here corresponding to carbon dioxide formation during the formate located uh, during the decomposition of the formate located on the metal. And it's possible, so I just, from memory, I present one of the possible curve of methanol conductivity and copper surface area. 
másik oldal lesz ide a kérdés, de paládium kefelé, paládium alumina, de formis, darno plea, important role, not reactive, of course, because no formis exist on the paládium, the formis located on the alumina, which is very stable one. Yeah. But it means that you emphasize now the role of the formis species, so it, it, it seems to me that you modified your previous theory, such as the most five years ago, when you mentioned that the formis plays an important role in the methanol synthesis in the paládium kefelé. Am I? Oh, yeah. Do I remember that? No, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think maybe I need to come back to my ability. Uh, okay, because I'm going to have to change it. Because I know, I think uh, it's not the, uh, in fact, uh, the, 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 last, the last job that I showed was the best in Berlin. Okay, because it's fast. No, but I remember that because, because we had taken the IDF because we knew that in the case of the uh, paladium, silica paladium, alumina, no form is exit from the paladium. Yes. Okay. So I mean that we prefer this idea that a form is the most important intermediate in that case. This is metanol, yeah. type of metanol. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say very happy that you, you have come to the conclusion uh, uh, again that the formate on the copper is the, is the key species for the methanol synthesis. But is there any possibility to address the question of the role of the zinc oxide in the light of the three techniques that you have used. Uh, it is, of course, a very difficult problem to say, in your case, uh, you, you've mentioned the formators on the copper, certainly. But if so, what is the influence of the zinc oxide? Now, is there any way to discriminate further to the next stage using a combination of chemical trapping and uh, IR experiments, for instance, whether there is a, a third type of uh, formate species, which is one which is intimately connected with perturbation of the copper site by the yeah. zinc oxide. Yeah. I agree with, uh, with your comment because uh, it's uh, there are only 20 minutes to discuss, and uh, it's most, the most simple thought uh, that has been uh, made on the copper in fact, it's true that we have over-located on this port, over uh, so located on this port, over located on the copper, but maybe we have some form, uh, some formate that is in the, in the interaction between the copper and the right and the And it's more difficult to characterize this kind of copper, this type of formate, and very difficult, in my opinion, to actually do uh, in the spectra, in the infrared spectra, some uh, band corresponding to the spatial type of, of formula. It's, it's clear that we have a, a formula located on the, maybe on the copper, but just on the border with the, the zyper side, and we have <coughs> the spatial activity of this formula. Even in the absence of copper, Methanol can be seen. Yeah. 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 During the TT uh, result decomposition. When you add copper, I think that you see some methanol, and that uh, I think is pure. Yes, on the following Frank Stone's question, uh, I mean, how do you visualize the formate performing on copper? I, I ask this question because John Pritchard and I did a very thorough study of hydrogen CO2 reactions on a single crystal copper, copper 100, and we are unable to produce only tetrachloride. And we've worked, we've worked at quite moderate pressure to take it with the toroid. So it seems that on a single crystal copper surface, yeah. it's very difficult to produce formate. Yes, but I, I, I think that the, there is another debate. Uh, if the formates are located on copper zero, or if formates are located on copper plus, Okay, well, that's it. We, we've also tried to detect CO2 absorption on copper and on copper films using certain potential measurements. And again, we're unable to detect the direct absorption of CO2. So, uh, 